Hello, and a warm welcome to our weekly show, Love Athletics. In this program, we bring you the latest highlights from our sport with expert input from different continental areas. And we're delighted to have uh, with us uh, today, Pierre-André Pache from Switzerland. He is the former uh, Lausanne uh, Diamond League uh, press chief, journalist, coach, and also a former athlete. Bonjour, Jean-Pierre. Lovely to see you, and a big thank you for joining us. Thanks for inviting me. <laughs> so, Pierre-André, I've known you for many years, but I never asked you. What motivated you to get involved uh, in athletics and start uh, such a multifaceted career? Oh, my first trigger for these sports <laughs> came during the 100 meter final um, uh, of the Olympic Games in Tokyo. Um, after watching the Bob Ice victory, I told myself I want to be a sprinter. And since then, I've been interesting in many, not, uh, not many, in all sports, the different sports of activity of all sports. Uh, and um, especially the sports that go fast, uh, like, for example, downhill skiing, uh, Formula One, MotoGP, uh, and sprint, of course. Um, the speed always gives me the, the thrill. Uh, no, the, how do you say, the chills. Yeah. And I love sports. Um, I naturally study at the university in Lausanne um, to, bec to become a, a PE teacher. They gave me the opportunity to, to practice many different sports. The basic sports like, uh, like uh, sports ball, uh, ball, ball sports like football, basketball, handball, volleyball and gymnastics, uh, uh, athletics, uh, uh, swimming, ice hockey, and, and so on. And um, they gave me the opportunity to practice most of the basic sports. Um, it, it was a good introduction for me <laughs> uh, in the sports world. And um, later, uh, Later, um, I practiced also many different uh, old sports, uh, other activities like golfing, uh, scuba diving, parachute, and uh, maybe paragliding too. So I, I, I like uh, in my life, during my life, the, the risk, the, the new challenges, yes. Altogether, I must have practiced about 40 different uh, sports activity in my life, uh, with a preference for athletics in the summer and skiing uh, during the winter. That's my preference is to athletics <laughs> in summer, <laughs> skiing in winter, that's the perfect combination. <laughs> <laughs> but goodness, you have definitely tried a lot, many more than I have. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> And after you hung up your spikes, you became a coach. Tell us about this aspect. Um, in fact, it came naturally. Naturally, when I was um, uh, with the other athletes, young athletes in my club, uh, as a PE PE teacher, I like teaching uh, the new sport, the new activity. The sport. And uh, in my club, I start to to train the young athlete and uh, it was normally because uh, uh, after my my knowledge uh, learned at the university in Rosen and biology and anatomy physiology sports mechanical too, uh, it was uh, for me a goal to to become a, a good um, a good coach uh, just a, a good coach and being a leader and an organizer by nature, since I was a teenager, um, I then took young sprinter from my club under my leadership, who then became over the years about, um, among the best sprinter and jumper and yardler too uh, in Switzerland. Uh, I eventually was able to send two 
athletes to the Atlanta Olympics uh, in 1996. Yes, uh, one man, 200 meters, and participated also in the relay 4x4 with the Swiss team, and a woman, 400 meters. Uh, that was one of my goals uh, as, um, uh, as a coach. And um, after that, having achieved one of uh, my goals uh, in 1996, I'm, I'm, busy, uh, I'm being busy and busy uh, uh, with my activity as a past chief uh, in Atletissima, I decided uh, gradually stopped uh, coaching uh, in 2000. Right, exactly. How did you become a journalist and 30 years uh, as press chief uh, of uh, Atletissima meeting? So tell us how yeah, it started and what were your favorite moments there? <laughs> it's a long time ago, huh? 30 years. Wow. <laughs> by, uh, by chance? No. Uh, <laughs> More seriously. I started this work is in a regional uh, newspaper. They, they, they're looking for a, a, a journalist interested in athletics uh, to write some articles about the regional athletics first. And I used to complete my, my articles uh, with a photo because uh, I like uh, uh, taking a picture uh, not only sports picture, but for the nature, for the color picture. Many, many, I take many, many pictures. Yeah. And um, my editor obviously um, seemed to like my work and then asked me to write more and more articles about different sports activity. And my reports were also notified by um, the sports editor in Le Matin, Le Matin is a national daily newspaper, uh, who asked me to write some articles about Atletissima and athletics after, and after uh, for gymnastics too, during maybe 10 till 10, 12 years. Uh, I continue my collaboration for the Swiss TV too. Um, we, uh, the Swiss TV and the French, of course, uh, during maybe 10, 10, 12 years too. But uh, PE teaching uh, at a primary secondary school and later at the university, university school in, in Lausanne uh, always remain my main activity. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and what were your favorite moments, some of your favorite moments in Atletissima? Oh, there's a many uh, moment. Maybe the, my my first best moment was during uh, the meeting in 1994 when Nero Borel broke the world record of 100 meter in Lausanne. It was the first world record in Lausanne. I never forgot that. <laughs> Other top uh, moments with uh, uh, athletics uh, stars coming to Lausanne. Yeah, um, after I have a photo of you with Carl Lewis, so, so obviously ah, that we'll go, go, yeah, that, that's a good moment. Yes, uh, uh, me, meeting meeting many athletes during thirty years. I have a good uh, relationships with the coach, with the manager. Uh, by chance, I was a coach, uh, a former coach too. That's why for me it was easy to meet all the, uh, the best athletes in the world and, and talking uh, with different things about life, about the training session, about the problems of the, act, the athletics problems uh, and the problems of the life too. Uh, and I had uh, during the, these long years, um, many, uh, a very good relationships with most of the best athletes in the world. It was a, ch a big chance for me to, to meet uh, these athletes and, and their coach too. It was very interesting because we, ca we can share the, the ex different experiences. Uh, uh, we can share the progress of, uh, uh, of the athletes, uh, 
the, 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 the new things about the, the training. It was very interesting for me uh, and, and for her too, from there too. Auntie's picture yeah, is, is a good souvenir because uh, <laughs> I'm on the picture with uh, Azafa Power. At this time, it was um, the world record man and uh, with uh, your barrel was the. Um, not only your barrel was. Justin um, Gatlin? Yeah, excuse me, Justin Gatlin. I was the Olympic uh, Olympic winner, yeah. <laughs> and that's why it's a good souvenir for me, just in the front of the entrance of the Olympic Museum. <laughs> <laughs> and as you have a, a special liking for speed, then uh, with the top uh, sprinters, it must be even more special. Hey, <laughs> yeah, it was a good <laughs> for me, but uh, I only stay at the regional level uh, for myself, uh, <laughs> not, not a world level. I was much worse for me. <laughs> <laughs> I was much worse as an active athlete, but that doesn't uh, mean we can't love the sport. <laughs> now let's look at what's been happening over the last uh, week before we come back to our guest. And uh, in particular, let's check out the world leads. Now, most athletes are honing their shape uh, for Eugene, but there still have been a few competitions and uh, Australian athletes have been particularly performant. After Jessica Hull last week, another Australian lady set a world lead and area record. Brooke Bushkul, née Stratton, a double Olympic finalist, landed at uh, 7 meters uh, 13 in Chula Vista, California on 9 July, improving the Oceania record she had set back in uh, 2016 with 7.05. And she improved her seasonal best by 52 centimeters. Talk about peaking at the right time. On 13 July at the Belarus uh, uh, Cup in uh, Brest, attended by Belarusian and Russian athletes, the 2016 European Javelin champion Tatiana Haladovic, who was already second in the season's list, improved her mark to a world leading 66-19 in spite of the bad weather. Other excellent performances, though not world leads, were also achieved in the last week. And one of them on the men's side was achieved on 10 July by 20-year-old Mauritian sprinter Noah Bibi, who hugely improved uh, his uh, 2200 uh, meter PB at the French under 23 championships, where he was competing with his French uh, club, clocking a sizzling 1989, the 10th best mark of the year in between talents like Kenny Bednarek and Christian Coleman. That was an improvement of over one second as his previous best uh, coming into the competition was 2093, set on 29 uh, May this year, which had already improved to 2064 in the heats. At the African Championships, he was the only uh, of one of two athletes to reach the finals in both the 100 and 200, but he finished last in both. And he was proudly taking a photo in the mix zone with continental champion uh, Ferdinand Domagnala. Now he's also among the global elite. And at the Abashiri Distance uh, Challenge in Japan on 13 July, Kenyan athletes registered good marks in track races, topped by Pauline Kamulu, who improved uh, over the 10,000 meters to 30, uh, 20, 97, the third fastest mark this year. But let's focus now on Europe. Two European competitions were held in the last fortnight. Uh, stadium events, uh, the uh, European under 18 championships were held in Jerusalem between 4 and 7 July. It was a high quality event with uh, three European all time bests by uh, Finnish javelin thrower Topi Parviainen, 84 52, and he's still only 15. Italian long uh, jumper Mattia Furlani with uh, 8 meters 04, and the British uh, women's medley relay. 16 championship records uh, were uh, improved, uh, 
and two athletes won two individual gold medals. Uh, Dutch uh, Neil Saladios won the 1500 and uh, the 3000 meters, and Italy's Mattia Forlani won both the long and the high jump, the high jump with 215. As we pointed out uh, in uh, a show before the championships, Furlani's versatility is all the more impressive as he only started competing in long jump this year and participated in only a handful of events so far. Other top marks in Jerusalem included uh, 6,106 points in heptathlon for 16-year-old uh, Croatian Jana Koshak and the uh, one meter 92 in high jump by another 16-year-old Serbian Angelina Topic. Pierre-André, were you able to follow this event? Oh, just a bit, only the results of the Swiss team too. Switzerland won three, uh, three medals, yes, in Jerusalem. Valentin Rimsan in the pole vault, the silver, uh, Shribin Kerber, bronze, and uh, in the 15,000 meter, and uh, Arno Liebel in bronze in the 2,000 meter steep cheese. An interesting fact uh, is um, Swiss athletics was re represented uh, by 43 uh, young athletes in, in Israel. It's the largest delegation ever sent um, to this uh, kind of championships uh, for the Switzerland. Many of them come from small regional club. And that's important for me. And that is very important for the, uh, the movement in the athletics in uh, my country. That's a sign of the good work done by the volunteer uh, coach uh, all over Switzerland. Because there was uh, Italian athletes, uh, French athletes, and uh, German, uh, German athletes too. That's a good sign for the athletics uh, uh, for the moment. Definitely. Now, one thing I found very interesting is that quite a few of the athletes competing in Jerusalem come from sporting families. Just among the gold uh, medal winners, several have uh, uh, famous parents or relatives. Frederick uh, Wiegel from Germany, Racewalk, is the son of uh, Ronald uh, Wiegel, who is also his coach, uh, who was the 50 kilometers uh, gold uh, at the World Championships 1983. Mikhailo Brodin of the Ukraine, discus throw, is the grandson of the great uh, Faina Melnik, the 1972 Olympic uh, uh, gold medalist. Topi Parviainen is the nephew of Aki Parviainen, who was uh, gold at the World Championships in 2001. And he was the youngest gold medal of the championships. Yolanda Kalabis from German in the steeplechase is the daughter of uh, Damian Kalabis, who was uh, gold at the 1998 uh, European Championships over 3000 steeple. And of course, Angelina Topic is the daughter of uh, Dragutin, uh, the 1990 European champion in high jump at age 19. He was then fourth at the Olympic Games in Atlanta and took bronze in the world indoors in 97. And okay. Mother Biliana was also a very strong uh, athlete, a triple jumper, who was uh, fourth at the World Championships in Berlin 2009. And she won her last uh, uh, the last of her eight uh, national titles in 2018 when she was aged 40. So congratulations to Biliana. Let's take a look now at the medal table from uh, the European under 18. So uh, now it's interesting, Great Britain tops uh, the medals with uh, eight golds uh, and they were all won by female athletes. Then uh, Germany always very strong, uh, Italy, Netherlands, uh, Spain and France. Now let's move now to non-stadium events. Another European athletics uh, competition took uh, place uh, at the beginning of July, and that was the inaugural European Athletics Off-Road Running Championships held uh, from the 1st to the 3rd of July in El Paso in the Canary Islands. The event combined uh, trail and mountain running and both uphill and downhill races and uphill races. Pierre-André, do you follow trail and mountain running at all? 
Yes, for one, one very good reason, because uh, Maud Mattis belongs to my athletics club, yes, uh, in uh, Sierra Riviera, uh, in Vevey. Uh, she's a girl I have known for more than 20 years uh, and who lives uh, in my native uh, village. It's funny. With the fourth and fifth uh, title, uh, European title, she showed that she continued to would you say, to masterfully dominate uh, the mountain race uh, with four medals, uh, win in El Paso in total, included the gold and uh, silver with the team, the Swiss team. She bought off the collection of medals for my country. Amusing, eh? <laughs> isn't it? I great fit for this ver versatile, she's a versatile um, sportswoman who also performs, uh, maybe uh, you know, in the marathon, she's the Swiss champion in 2022 in the, mar in the marathon with two hours, 31 and something, a few seconds. And in winter, in ski, in the, how do you say in English, mountain, mountain ring? I'm not sure, uh, uh, the, the, is, is the ski, um, is not the ski de randonnée, is the ski alpinism. Uh, a, few, a few years ago, she, she won the Glacier Patrol, is a, in, a very popular international um, uh, ski event. From the departure is from Zermatt, and the arrival is in Verbier. Uh, and you participate uh, with uh, two two other person, and the girls uh, break the record a few years ago. That's why wow, I follow this event. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's so we really have a real personal collection uh, to Maud uh, Matisse. <laughs> <laughs> Very impressive. And exactly, she won uh, two golds uh, in El Paso in uh, both <coughs> the uphill, downhill, and uh, the uphill only race. Yeah. So in the uphill, Cesare Maestri of Italy won uh, the men's race <coughs> after having taken the European Tau title. On the second day of competition on 2 July, dedicated to trail, it was the French who were the strongest. They had gold and bronze uh, with the women and silver and bronze with the men. But the surprise came from Belgium with uh, Drion Chapois, who uh, took uh, the men's uh, race. And finally, on the last uh, day, as we said, uh, Maud uh, took another gold and uh, Frenchman uh, uh, Sylvain Cachard uh, took the uphill downhill for the men. And uh, Norway's Ida Valdal, like Mathis, won both races in mountain uh, running, but in the under 20 category. So let's take a look at the medal table where we see that uh, Maud's uh, results uh, really place uh, Switzerland uh, in uh, third position behind uh, France uh, and uh, and uh, Italy. So uh, congratulations uh, for a very successful competition. Now, some good marks were also registered in uh, road races over the last uh, week. On 10 July in Utica, New York, Kenyan uh, ladies uh, Rosemary Wanjiro and Veronica Wanjiro clocked the second and third uh, best marks of the season over 15 uh, kilometers in the Boiler Maker 15 km road races with uh, 48.54 and 49.15 respectively. On the men's side, Ethiopia's uh, Jemal Yimer Mekonen took a tight victory in a world leading 42.38 over Kenya's Edwin Kiplagat, only two, uh, only with 42.40, and USA's uh, Samuel Chalanga with 43.09. Now, Pierre Andre, we're now uh, midway uh, through the year already, so we'd like to ask, what were your favorite athletics moments so far this year? Uh, maybe the world record of uh, McLaughlin of uh, the 400 meter yodels, 51 41. Uh, she, because she runs so easily, I'm sure she can go even faster. And she, uh, she said that there are always something to improve upon. I don't think the perfect race exists. That's why 
Um, in my opinion, this girl can run under 51 seconds one day, not immediately in Eugene, but why not? We never know. Wait and see. All the incredible, incredible performances um, for me is the, how do you say, the regular regularity huh? regularity or of duplantis in the pole vault and is a record uh, outdoor record the six meters 60 uh, realized in uh, stockholm also the the, um, the victories of dos santos and the 400 meter yodels and especially 46 uh, 80 in uh, realized in stockholm and uh, on the Swiss, uh, Swiss side, of course, the gold medal of Cambodia uh, in, in the World Championships in the, it was in Belgrade uh, of the 60 meter hinder and the 8 meter 45 of Eamor in the long jump uh, to find a decathletes uh, among the best specialists of one uh, individual event. It's very rare and uh, is one of the favorite for the final, for, for the long job, <laughs> not for the final, for the moment, uh, for Eugene. Definitely. <laughs> so let's focus now on the European uh, prospects uh, for the World Championships and take it by groups of events, starting with the uh, sprints and hurdles. Oh, uh, you all Eugene, sprint of course. <laughs> Yeah, all sprint and others should be dominated by the American or Jamaican uh, sprinter, inclu including the relays. But with the same question for two athletes. First athlete is um, Jacobs, and the second one is uh, um, is a Norway uh, Warren. My question is: How fit are Jacobs on the 100 meter? And Varon in the 400 meter yodels after their injuries. I'm not sure. The Italian has only a race, a two race uh, this year. And we, it, will, it will be over 10 months, uh, 10 months since the Norwegian finished uh, his last race. Winning or just obt obtaining a medal with this special condition would be a um, resounding uh, achievement so it was especially after three uh, competition the heats the semi-final and the final um uh was, uh, in tokyo last year uh, femke bolt will be on the podium maybe uh, behind one of the, one or two girls uh, laufin and uh, muhammad i think so in the really the European chances uh, are bigger with um, Great Britain and perhaps Italy <laughs> uh, with a good shape of, um, of Jacobs. Uh, for by for one, uh, maybe Netherlands and Belgium by the four by four have a chance to, to get to the podium. In the one man side, Great Britain. And why not Swiss girls as serious contender uh, behind the um, Jamaican girls and the uh, USA girls? Uh, and we, we never know at the relay. You, you know, uh, an accident can happen very quickly, especially during the transmission of the button. Mm -hmm. And at least the Poland and the Interland have also their chance in the um, four by four mixed relay, in my opinion. That's all, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. And uh, Poland has uh, two strong uh, girls in the 400. Yes. So uh, yes. they can be finalists. Uh, they should be finalists. Uh, we'll see what happens. And talking about finalists, I mean, last year in Tokyo, Switzerland had uh, both Mujinga Kambunji and uh, Ayla Del Ponte in the final, which for us from outside was a little bit uh, surprising. Uh, now we know, even though Ayla has been injured for a long time, now everybody knows uh, the value of uh, Swiss uh, sprinters. And in the 4 by 100 uh, women's relay, they currently hold the world lead. Of course, not many countries contest the event before outside a major competition, but uh, they could do well. 
Yeah, I cross my finger. <laughs> it, it, <laughs> it, it will be a, a, a big surprise for me, uh, but it, it, it will be very difficult. Right? <laughs> uh, one thing is very interesting is the level of the sprint, um, the sprint in Switzerland now, especially with the women. And uh, for example, now, uh, when six, seven, seven girls have the minima to get to Munich for the European Championships. And the, the average level in the sprints of the 100 meter is the best in Europe before France, uh, Germany, and the other countries. That's incredible. Fantastic. Uh, uh, yeah. Really, as you say, it shows the good work that is being done throughout uh, the country and also having. Uh, seeing athletes from your country progressing and reaching the world level it gives motivation to the younger ones oh yes sure definitely and we have the chance to organize six meeting among the 50 best meeting uh, uh, in in the world in switzerland with uh, geneva la chaude fond bern uh, bellinzon zurich uh, and uh, atletissima of course that's a big a big chance for the for the athletes. Wow, Swiss athletes. Yeah. <laughs> now let's talk about uh, middle and long distances. Oh, middle and long distances. So what do you say? Um, uh, maybe uh, on the man side, but the African people dominated. I mean, Chopin and Kenyan for me. Uh, there is no other way. I think so. But um, Jacob Ingebrigtsen, a uh, Norwegian, win a medal, uh, can win a medal, maybe can win uh, the 15,000 meter. I don't know if he participate at the 5,000 meter. He's entered for both. Both? Ah, OK. He entered for He's both. One... OK. Yeah. Um, on the woman's side, is Hassan. Hassan could uh, win, uh, win again, both events, if she decided to participate. Uh, she participates first at the 5,000 meter, and she wants to decide in um, the next two days, uh, I think so, uh, to participate at 15,000 or at 10,000 meter. I, I don't know exactly. In a... Yeah, now she said she's going to do 10,000. Five uh, 10, and 10. 10. Yes, she okay. confirmed uh, five and yeah. 10. Mm. Uh, she decided uh, for double, maybe uh, she can win both. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. It's the first uh, first race uh, this year, though. I don't know exactly uh, which She ran in Portland. She ran Portland, just one yes. race about a week ago uh, in Portland. But okay, exactly, as you say, she hadn't competed at all. I mean, she had such a crazy, crazy competition uh, schedule in Tokyo that you can understand she yeah. really needed time to recover. Mm. Oh, yes, I understand. Uh, that's the intelligent uh, decision, for, in my opinion. Yes. And, uh, she, and she, she can run very fast in each championships with a very good mental. That's so important in the final. And it, that, that's for this reason, I can, uh, she can win, uh, run very fast and win again one and win two, one, two, two medal, gold medals, in my opinion. Mm. We'll see. Now, what about the eight I'm British 800-meter runners, Max Bergen and uh, Keely Hodgkinson? Oh, I, I, I don't know. It is at, to personally, that's why it's difficult for me to give you a, an opinion. Uh, it was an altitude, huh? yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe. maybe. I, I, I've no, I think I, I think no, Athi Wu and Ajay Wilson are too strong for Kitty Hodgkinson. Yeah. She has to Ajay up Wu, her Ajay game strong. because she hasn't been very impressive this year. So either she really ups her game in Eugene, otherwise I don't see her with a chance of winning. Uh -uh. Okay, maybe Richardson, maybe. I, I, We'll see. <laughs> now in the marathon, uh, Netherlands has Abdi Nageye, and he could uh, do well. Yeah, uh, I hope so. I hope for him. <laughs> I wish for him. <laughs> uh, and the other one, no, 
right, in the marathon. And mainly, do you know, may, mainly the, from Romania participate in the marathon? No, no, she's not. No. Uh, former no. Kenyan uh, uh, competing for Romania, she's not entered yet. Okay. So I'm not sure if she's, if she's, uh, but uh, she wasn't on the list. So the best uh, European is uh, Israel's uh, Lona Salpeter, but I okay. don't see her meddling. Mm -mm. Uh, both marathon men and women, uh, it's, it's very, very difficult for the European athletes to, to get uh, on the podium. Yes. I think. Mm -hmm. Especially no, with the, the, the weather is very, is very hot. For me, it's uh, an advantage for the African people. Now, race walks, we're likely to see athletes from China, Japan, and various uh, Latin American countries battle for medals. But Sweden's Perseus Kallström, who was bronze medalist at 20K in the last World Championship and was the winner of the World Race Walking Championship in Oman, over 35, is a good chance. And he's entered in both uh, races. Ireland has a very strong athlete in the 20K with uh, David uh, Kenny. And uh, let's not forget that there's lots of ath Russian athletes uh, in the top list. And of course, they won't uh, be able to compete. Spain always has very strong team. They have three athletes among the 10 fastest entered in the 20K. And Miguel Angel Lopez has the fourth best time among entrants in the 35. Italy's 20-kilometer uh, Olympic champion Massimo Stano has chosen to compete over the 35 kilometers, and instead uh, Italy's other Olympic champion Antonella Palmisano decided to skip Eugene and to focus on the European Championships, uh, which take place uh, shortly afterwards. Now, Pierre André, there's another area where uh, Europe has uh, strong uh, athletes, and that's field events. Yes, as usual, uh, the European athletes have the highest chance to, uh, of winning the medal of several, many, many medals in the um, uh, technical uh, events. I think first at Duplantis, the pole vault, right? of course. Um, maybe Tantoglu for me. Tantoglu uh, stayed the favorite for the long jump with Eama and Montler maybe. Pichardo and Dalla Valle uh, in a trip and jump. Tambury in the high jump with, uh, uh, how do you say the pronunciation? Pri, 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 oh, I forget the name. Uh, Pri Biclo, Pri Biclo in the high jump. Um, the high jump uh, is the, the, the very difficult to, to know the favorite the, in T7 because uh, 12 athletes participate uh, has already jumped 2 meters 30 this year. There is no uh, clear favorite, except maybe uh, Tambury with uh, the, his experience. In this course, I see uh, Che, Stal, Alekna, yeah, uh, because they all, uh, all the dominating this course uh, this season. As Novicki from Poland, Pankin, Fashdek in Hammer. Yeah. Uh, in Hammer, there were five uh, European people uh, over the 80 meter, I think so. Uh, and uh, by the woman, uh, on the woman's side, a lot of uh, European girls can also get up uh, on the podium, uh, uh, like uh, Maukic in the high jump, Ge Gesharenko and Valorti Gara. Sutej and Bruni, Fantini, a hammer, uh, without forgetting Kaladovic uh, and Tsengo uh, and Jablin. Finally, uh, no, is the Eptaton is a different uh, event. That, that, that's all. So we can expect many medals from the technical events, uh, more than the sprinting and the other uh, events. Yes, and Sandra Perkovic uh, is uh, fighting hard. Valerie Alman is very, very strong. But Sandra Perkovic uh, has uh, shown that she can definitely medal and uh, put up yes. a fight. 
I forget to, to give the name. Yes, you're right. <laughs> In the javelin, especially among the men, uh, I mean, uh, Anderson Peters has uh, thrown uh, three times, I think, over 90 meters. Uh, but Czech yeah. Republic's uh, Jakub uh, Vlaidek also uh, is the only uh, other athlete to have uh, thrown over 90, 90 meters 88. Finland's Oliver Helander is uh, improving, 89-83. And of course, the Germans are always there, even though uh, uh, Fetter is injured and will not be in Eugene. Now, what about combined events? Oh, combined events. Uh, <laughs> Maybe Meyer, but uh, <laughs> it's a point of uh, interrogation. Uh, mayor, because he uh, he didn't participate at any decathlon for this year. I'm not sure he's a very very good shape. The problem with Mayer is the uh, injuries, and um, the level is so high this year, especially uh, in North America with Warner and uh, three American too, more uh, more than eighty thousand eight thousand uh, six hundred or 700 points that's a lot i'm not sure uh, that's only one chance in my opinion is a mayor can go on, on the podium May, i'm not sure at all mm -hmm. and in a woman woman pool uh, fetter maybe the fetter yeah. sulek and paras uh, and cham i have no idea about the, the the shame of cham for the moment she participated at the afternoon i didn't see uh, she has entered. She didn't complete a heptathlon yet. She has been competing uh, on individual events. So her shape okay. is a little bit of a mystery. If she's doing well, she should medal. But she Anouk Fetter has had a very good uh, year and she's the world uh, leader and has over leader, 500 yeah. points more than the second uh, person in the season's list. So Anouk Fetter should look uh, good for a medal. Yeah, I think so too. Mm -mm. So thank you very much, uh, Pierre André. And uh, what events are you personally looking most uh, forward to? Oh, uh, certainly the old sprint, <laughs> because I like so much uh, the sprints and the other race. But I, I, I like um, seeing, watching all, uh, all the events. Yes. Uh, I'm a fan of athletics. I'm a fan of sport. Of I'm a fan of each event. I'm fan of the the fighting uh, and the last 100 meters for in the long distance uh, races or middle distance too. That's why uh, I'm fan of decathlon too. The combined events. Uh, I won't miss a club of these championships. I'm sure every day I, I, I watch on the TV. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> and as we come to the end of our show, normally we look at upcoming events, but of course, uh, uh, over the next uh, week, over the next 10 days, it's all about the World uh, Championships. It's here. And as you say, Pierre-André, we're going to be glued uh, to our uh, television screens, to the computer screens to check uh, and double check uh, results, uh, series, uh, etc. <laughs> Uh, yes, exactly. And the social network, too. <laughs> <laughs> to look at reactions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Definitely. And if the Swiss ladies do well, I may ask you to send a reaction uh, video. <laughs> okay, I, I hope for me. I cross my finger. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Or Simone Hammer, of course. <laughs> uh, Simone Hammer, uh, yes, is the biggest chance. Uh, yes. It's not... Uh, yes. Cambo I would love it. The Cambo I would love it, yes, too. Uh, th that's very... Uh, well, uh, and uh, maybe, I I'm not sure what I said now, but maybe is uh, it will be the, the first uh, first time uh, I decathlon uh, when uh, we win a, a gold medal in the, uh, the World Championships, in my opinion. I'm not sure, but maybe. In, in I, individual I think, it, event, I think, I think so. so. I mean, I'll have to, you know, we'll have to double check uh, the statistics, but uh, yeah. 
I think there's good possibility. That's a probability, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I follow all the world championships uh, except. Uh, ex except for one on the TV, it was in Tokyo, but uh, it was the second time I watching the <laughs> World Championships on TV and not. Uh, yeah, not it feels a bit strange. The stadium, it it's, well. it's strange, yes, but why not? <laughs> on the other hand, there are some people that say that you can follow better, you can see everything uh, when you're uh, watching it on television. I don't know. Yes, you can see, maybe, yes, because you stay and you always focus your regard on one place, not everywhere. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you don't have to go down to the mix zone to speak to the athletes. So uh, go down and get down. Go down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> so we're now at the end of our program. It was great uh, having uh, Pierre André with us on the show. Yeah, thank you. It was, it was nice um, to inviting me and to participate at your uh, with you at your uh, uh, your blog or how do you say you it's uh, emission emission podcast. Uh, I call it a show. Podcast. <laughs> I do podcast. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, uh, Pierre André. And uh, thank you all for watching and see you next week to look uh, together at uh, the highlights, comments and analysis of what's been happening in uh, Eugene over the past uh, seven days. Okay, bye-bye, see you. Thank you.